Hello everyone, welcome back to another Coa Joint tutorial. My name's Tom and today we're going to be talking about coroutines a bit more um, because that was uh, quite a popular video that I did. Um, so if you haven't seen that video I suggest that you check it out um, if you want to watch this. Um, if you have seen it then you should understand everything in this video. Um, today I'm going to talk about how to control coroutines. Um, so in the previous video we looked at some of the, the uses for them in, in stopping uh, the execution of code but um, it wasn't particularly controllable, there was no way to sort of uh, stop and start that process but um, actually because of the structure that Unity uses to implement coroutines we can actually do a bit better than this um, so there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of detail behind what I'm going to talk through today and I don't, I don't really want to cover it in this video if you're interested in a bit more of the behinds there's an excellent article on Unity Gems and um, actually the code that I'm going to be using is, is very similar to um, some code in a Unity Gems article so make sure you go over to them and check it out. Um, I have no affiliation with them, but um, I think that they've got some excellent videos and um, content over there. So what I'm going to show you how to do is control coroutines. And uh, just as an example first, let's take a look at a coroutine in action. Um, this coroutine moves a cube between two spheres uh, back and forth just by lerping its position. Um, I'll just show you a little bit more. You can see that's all it's doing. And the way I've implemented this, if I go to Mono Develop, is down here, this um, coroutine here, um, move between points, and it yields, and basically it waits until this move to point method um, returns. And move to point just basically moves the position to another position, which I've specified as the position of each of the spheres. And uh, if you go to start, I start the coroutine here, move between points, and then all it would do is it would just move to this first sphere, move to the second sphere, move to the first sphere, move to the second sphere. Now I'm going to show you that we can actually control this coroutine um, using the A key. In this case that's what, that's what I've done here. This is the way I control it. I'm not using any different code to do this. I'm just using the structure of a coroutine to my advantage. So, oh, I didn't save the code. Apologies. So now notice that now that I've played, I've, I've, I have full control over the execution of that coroutine. Now if I press the A key, we'll see that we actually move to the sphere like before. And so it's completed that yield, uh, yield instruction to, um, to move to the first sphere. And now it's waiting basically for me to allow it to move to the next yield statement. And that's controlled by pressing the A key again. Now if I press the A key a lot, I can't do anything until it actually completes that yield instruction and then when I press the A key again it moves. So I'm sure you get the idea. So how have I actually achieved this? So what makes this possible is the way that Unity implements coroutines. Um, every time that you create a coroutine in Unity you're actually creating an IE numerator. So um, the Unity Gens website has some useful information about what an IE numerator is and um, also you might want to look up on MSDN but basically it's an interface which allows you to step one by one or iterate through a collection. Um, in this case we want to iterate through um, some yield statements. So when the compiler actually sees um, an IE numerator or basically it sees yield statements in, a, in an IE numerator what it does is it wraps the method that you're uh, creating in a class and then includes a new method called moveNext and a property called current. So moveNext is a uh, method which returns true if the enumerator was successfully able to move to the next uh, step in the enumeration. So say for example we were at this step here and we called move next basically what happens is it moves to this next yield statement here and um, it returns true if it was able to get there and it returns false if it wasn't. So an example of when it would return false was say if it was here and then you called move next there's no other instructions to get to so it would return false. So that's what move next does. Does current actually stores the uh, the next the next value in the enumeration? So move next moves us there, and then current actually allows us to perform it. And that's what we're actually doing here in this step through coroutine. It's uh, another coroutine, so we start it use a start coroutine here, and it contains a, a while true loop. Now what happens is when it enters the while true loop, it it checks if we have some input, and then it tries to move to the next step in the enumeration. So we've passed in a coroutine here, in this case move between points. 
the first time it's called, when we call um, move between points dot move next, it moves us to this statement here. And it goes, okay, yet we were successfully able to move to this step. And then what we do is we wait until that current step, i.e. this yield return statement here, um, completes. So it keeps us held here until, as, uh, as, as all coroutines do, it maintains us here until we actually complete that statement. So that's what current does. It, it actually stores the next statement in the enumeration. And that's basically all we're doing. We just repeat that, going each uh, step by step through this um, coroutine until we actually complete it. So every time we call, uh, we press A, and we're able to move next successfully. I.e., there's another instruction below it that we can achieve. We we yield until we actually complete it, and that's basically all that allows us to um, to achieve this control over the the coroutine. And um, you can do much smarter stuff with this, like you can pause coroutines, you can stop coroutines, just by using this move next um, move next method that it wraps around any coroutine in Unity. Um, so I hope you see the application of this. Um, one one thing that you could do is you could use this um, on a patrol route. Basically, you could have a bot moving around on a patrol route, and then you could wait until certain logic. You could replace this statement here with certain logic, so that it would wait until some logic completes, i.e., an animation completes or something, before it moves to the next step in the um, iteration. Or simply, you could just put the logic in here. So you could put uh, put an animation, and then it would, when the animation completes, or uh, something like that, then you call move next, it would do the animation, and then it would wait until uh, it completes the next instruction. So it's quite a powerful way of controlling coroutines, and um, I hope this explains it, uh, the, the basic principles of it anyway. So thanks very much, and uh, I'll see you next Wednesday.